Percy's parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky. And all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Dowager Hat's birthday. The Fat Controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that the Fat Controller had a special for him. But he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure the Fat Controller will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, the Fat Controller did come back. Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendan Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis had been right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She'll be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto trucks. And Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Whoa! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky and Percy were covered in thick grey dust. And so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. <gasps> I'll go to the washdown. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workman got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon Percy was gleaming green again, but his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. <gasps> I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. 
I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels. It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. But this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Dowager Hat's birthday parcel. He couldn't go to the party at Knapford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel the Fat Controller's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. The Fat Controller and Dowager Hat were waiting at Knapford Station. The Fat Controller was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, Mom. Here's your very special birthday present. Dowager Hat beamed, and even the Fat Controller smiled. As the workman opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Dowager Hat was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Dowager Hat. Oh, my, Bertram! What a wonderful surprise! I'm very happy! <laughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of all. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for the Fat Controller's Railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, the Fat Controller had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He'll be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favourite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. 
This is a big day for you. The Steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It will save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Huh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas, I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Please. Uh, thank you. So Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry uh -huh. sighed. Then he wheezed. <laughs> then he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas, it's not my... <coughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But, but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffily by the hoist. Henry spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin? Yes, boss. I mean, Thomas. James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal? And Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss! Uh, Thomas! Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. Oh, even hooks! Sorry, Spencer! Then Kevin dropped Henry's coat right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crushing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Ah! Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown. All over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twig, soot and straw. 
Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes! This is all my fault! No, boss! I mean, Thomas, I'm sure it's my fault! I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited. And too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <coughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Ah. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Any time, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> the biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puff proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then the Fat Controller left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my! A welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steamed slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff around the island, telling my friends about the party.
Thomas clickety clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McColl's farm. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McColl's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Natford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate trucks. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James and Toby chuffed away to shun trucks. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Natford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steamworks. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steamworks. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Napford to see the fat controller. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes. I haven't found a welcome present for Hero. And I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvellous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. 
Don't you think so, Buzz? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clacked down the track, this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's Welcome Party is almost over! I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find your welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodo. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. Henry's Good Deeds There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. The fat controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your carriages at all times. And remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor Warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry. Not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry chuffed slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas! You helped me! That's a good deed! Well done! You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed and they will say, Well done, Henry! This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Henry stopped and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. 
Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons, his wheels whirred, he puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the wear of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now, they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers! My idea wasn't a good deed at all! Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes! How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland Fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland Fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's carriage. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland Fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the Sodor warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colourful bird flapped and flew from a tree, high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes. The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. The fat controller will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colourful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodor Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry! Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looks snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. 
Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. And well done, Henry. Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please the fat controller. One morning, Hero chuffed into Napford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Napford. Then, the fat controller hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <coughs> Hero was worried for the fat controller. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the thin controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother the fat controller. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway, as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask the fat controller where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The fat controller is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping the fat controller. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find the fat controller. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The fat controller is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping the fat controller was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. The fat controller was there. Hero! While I was with the thin controller, I heard worrying news. 
Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. The fat controller was cross. The fat controller was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway, and now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> the fat controller gasped. You didn't want to bother me? I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. The Fat Controller will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapford. The Fat Controller has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller. I was wrong, Percy. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crate? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, the Fat Controller had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. The Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect the special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the lion of Sodor, isn't it? But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. 
He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promise to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's driver poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Thomas has made a mistake. Oh, stop, Thomas. Uh, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering carriages. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't it? But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff my boiler. How exciting. I only have straw in my trucks. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Oh, no. Trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor is not But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. The fat controller was there, and so were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish and straw. The fat controller was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So the fat controller told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise. The Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. 
I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the line of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shone and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mail will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. So Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor. And everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mail will be at Knapford and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shone and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest. <laughs> Everyone cheered, and Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was the Fat Controller's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up the Fat Controller and Lady Hat for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Oh. Ahead, he could see the Fat Controller already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. The Fat Controller turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> the Fat Controller had a moustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The Fat Controller <laughs> chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. The Fat Controller never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled. And the Fat Controller never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favourite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now, Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about the Fat Controller's new moustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly, so he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithwaite Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried, but before he could explain, the Fat Controller climbed down. Marvellous! What fun! Please, sir. We can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have 
plenty of time. You worry too much. And the fat controller strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did the fat controller say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. The fat controller played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. The fat controller never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A moustache. It just appeared. Today, the fat controller doesn't seem like the fat controller at all. Just then, the fat controller came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But the fat controller wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then the fat controller jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, the fat controller jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signal man. The fat controller never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw the fat controller pull a lever. Then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard the fat controller whoop for joy. Hurrah! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask the fat controller why he's being so strange. But when the fat controller came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, the fat controller had a moustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. The fat controller is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you are late. The fat controller and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If the fat controller is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passenger stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask the question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, fat controller. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not the fat controller. I'm Stalloam Hat. I'm his brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. The fat controller's brother was very excited. Hurrah! Another game of hide and seek. Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly, otherwise your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did the fat controller and Lady Hat. Thomas! 
Where have you been? Just then, the Fat Controller's brother stepped down from Annie. The Fat Controller sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered the Fat Controller, his brother and Lady Hat to the party, just in time. The party looked grand, but Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. The Fat Controller is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide-and-seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Oh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. The Fat Controller chuckled <laughs> even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. <laughs> <laughs>